Hello, change makers, because we're all change makers, really. My uh, presentation tonight, really, I've called Surfing the Waves of Change, because I see these challenges that we've heard tonight like waves. And we, as change makers, I think, could learn from surfers, board riders, and how we meet these challenges and see them like waves. Harrison Owen, who is a person I respect a lot in the work I do in facilitating groups, he is an inventor of open space. He says, wave riders are curious people, possessed of an innate capacity to go with the flow, constantly seizing on opportunity when others see no possibility or even disaster. So we're, we have to change the way that we approach change. And we've heard tonight many reasons why we do need to change. Most of all, I think uh, we're going to be forced to change. We have no option. And I am going to be positive tonight, really, telling a story, giving some hope, some insights that I've learned over my 20 years working in the sustainability sector. For the last 10 years, I've framed the work I do as community resilience. And we are so vulnerable now. We see the vulnerabilities even a few months ago when it snowed for a few days, and this was the result. But we're very vulnerable around feeding ourselves, looking after ourselves, housing ourselves. We need to build that resilience, our ability to cope, our ability to meet these changes, to surf the waves of change. But I'm interested in how we do that together as communities. We need to be personally resilient for the changes we are about to face and we're facing now. But if we don't come together and face those as communities in our local areas, then I fear that we won't make that transition quick enough we really need to change our thinking if we're going to meet the challenges ahead. We need to move from an ego system way of thinking, which is about the individual, to an ecosystem way of thinking, which is about the well-being of the whole, which includes me. Bernard Shaw says, progress is impossible without change, and those who can't change their minds cannot change anything. So to surf those waves of change, we need to change our worldviews. We need to assess our assumptions, look at our, the way that we're doing things and seeing how we could change that to make it different. We need to move from the me to the we. Ireland's got a rich tradition of cooperatives. This is Horace Plunkett. And Horace Plunkett and E. Russell and others a century ago went around this country into communities and looked at how could we do more together? How could we pool our resources and our assets so that we could thrive in this place? And you can see the, in the headline behind Horace there, cooperate and make Ireland a nation. And what I want to look at tonight is a new approach to cooperatives, about community ownership, about community engagement, about us as citizens taking control, and talking about people power in our local places. My work started 20 years ago in this field, in sustainability in Temple Bar, where Cultivate Living and Learning, which is actually a workers' co-op. We are the Sustainable Ireland Cooperative, really. But we ran this center for 10 years pushing uh, an, an, an idea that we could be more sustainable if we came together and we changed some of the ways we did things around producing food, producing our energy, how we procure the things that we need. And we ran that learning center in Dublin and then where we were really talking the talk, but then we moved to Clock Jordan Eco Village where we walk the talk. I've been involved in Clock Jordan Eco Village since it started and I often say it's the longest and most expensive self-development course I've ever taken because you really learn about yourself as you engage with others. Now, the eco-village is no utopia, really. It's a lot of challenges. And even the word eco-village is a bit of a misnomer because we connect completely with this amazing town of Clock Jordan in North Tipperary. We see ourselves as an ecosystem of innovation because although there's an educational charity, Sustainable Projects, that run the, and bought the land, there's now about 15 different businesses, 130 people, three NGOs, two civil society organizations inside the place, so it's very complex. 
And I love this quote from Fritjof Capra, who's a systems thinker, so he's thinking a bit more holistically. He says, the great challenge of our time is to build and nurture sustainable communities. Communities that are designed in such a way that their ways of life, businesses, economies, physical structures, and technologies do not interfere with nature's inherent ability to sustain life. And that's what's happening right now. The way we're doing things is destroying the ability of the natural world to provide what we need. In some ways, we need to reconnect, change the relationship, reconnect with ourselves, reconnect with each other, and most importantly, reconnect with the living world around us. The Eco Village, as you can see, connects completely to Clock Jordan Eco Village. We want to change the, the nature of Eco Villages, not to be exclusive things that were for either some hippies in Germany or some middle class people in America who could afford it, but to be something that was of value to everyone. So our objective is to normalize mainstream, to prototype, to think about ideas that could be replicated. It is a great place to live. It's also very difficult. People can be challenging. But there's so much there, the richness that I'm so privileged to be part of. Um, at the heart of it is a sense of belonging again. And I think there's a hunger to belong. You know, we're really, we're modeling the transition to a low carbon, which is important, but also a resilient society. We could probably reduce our carbon with some new technologies. We could draw down carbon and store it somewhere. But we need to build our resilience if we're to cope with the convergence of challenges facing us. So how do we build that resilience? Well, we have to govern ourselves differently. We have to think about how we organize ourselves differently. We really need to um, reduce our impact, but as well build social capital so that we can cope with the challenges we face. Restore that sense of place, that pride of place. Uh, restore that sense of community, which I think there's a yearning for. George Monbiot says in his new book, he's a, a Guardian journalist in his new book, which is called, um, I can't remember what it's called now. It's through restoring community, renewing civic life, and claiming our place in the world, we build a society in which our extraordinary nature, our altruism, empathy, and deep connection is realized. There's something there that resonates with everything I've been saying. That's exactly what we need if we're going to make this transition in the short time frame that we have to make it. Margaret Wheatley, who I love, she's an author that writes about complexity and communities as living systems. She always says, whatever the problem, community is the solution. So I want to show you four things that I think any community, any place, could start doing very quickly around food, energy, housing, and mobility. So four quick stories around those things. Food, something we do every day, choices we make every day, a convivial act in our communities. This is a street feast, which is just a brilliant way to start to build that relationness, that uh, uh, social capital. But food, I think we, we need to move to organic, as we heard earlier. It's great, there's new trends in growing our own, in, in going to farmers markets. But what I want to talk about is a new approach, a new relationship with our food producers. In Clock Jordan, we have a community-supported agriculture project, Clock Jordan Community Farm, CSAs, Community Supported Agriculture. Across France and Italy, they're huge. Here, we've got five or six. In Clock Jordan, we're probably the biggest. The idea of community-supported agriculture is we subscribe upfront to the farm. So there's no sales, in, in a sense. We pay about 16 euros a week, and twice a week we get a delivery uh, to our distribution, which is on the main street of Clock Jordan, because two-thirds of the members are eco-villagers, one-third are from the local area. And really what this does is provides livelihoods for two farmers that we pay probably more than they would get if they were farming. Those farmers don't have to think about negotiating with Aldi or Lidl. They don't have to think about standing at the farmer's market after a busy week trying to sell their produce. They only think about growing and sending to the distribution. The community then support the volunteers, the distribution, um, a lot of the uh, um, finances and things. The farmers just have to focus on farming. So this is a change in relationship, 
locally, supporting our local food producers, but also supporting that local economy. This is like shop lo local at a different level. We could take this further then. This is our baker, Joe Fitzmaurice. He has a bakery called Riot Rye Bakehouse and Bread School. It's like award-winning sourdough breads, wood-fired uh, oven. And he's really trying to show how a, a baker could be village scale and viable, not have to grow, to expand, to export, but to stay providing a goods, a service to his local community. He's diversified a little into education. He does really successful real bread courses, but he also has a bread club. So similar to our CSA, we subscribe to the baker. So uh, we get two loaves delivered um, for a discount every week. And before he starts baking, he knows he's sold 100 loaves. He's got that guaranteed cash flow in his bank account from the community supporting his business. So we could see this idea of the changing relationship um, in, in, in these two things. We've also got an egg club, a, a milk club, a raw milk, so a relationship with a young farmer who's producing raw milk, bottled, delivered, uh, a meat club, and a whole food buyers club. So you get the idea that we could actually have a stronger and tighter relationship to the people producing things around us. We could do the same with energy. These two things are vital. If we got those two right, we are going to be resilient. In Clock Jordan, we have 100% renewable energy for our heating and hot water through burning biomass and distributed through insulated pipes to all the houses. There's 55 houses there now, but there will be 130 eventually. So this idea of moving to renewables, we have to get off fossil fuels as quickly as possible. But there's huge problems with wind. We know that. You know, there's a resistance because we don't want our landscape blighted with these things. But this is a community-owned wind turbine, the only one in Ireland, which is about 15 miles from us in Clock Jordan, uh, owned by a cooperative of farmers and community members uh, and providing uh, energy into the grid. They're now looking at CREZ, Community Renewable Energy Supply, where we could sign up to electricity produced by communities. And every time that wind turbine turns, if you were looking at it, you know your community benefit from it. That could change the nature of it. But wind is only part of the mix in the energy. We need anaerobic digesting, we need solar. And every street, every neighborhood could be a power station with solar panels and the community buildings and the church roofs providing income and capital to the communities. This is in Northern Ireland, um, this uh, project, NICE, Northern Ireland Community Energy. Unfortunately, our government haven't got a feed-in tariff, so we're not going to benefit as individuals or communities in this revolution which is happening everywhere across Ireland. Energy will be decentralized, it won't stay centralized, and we need to be ready to benefit. Housing, massive challenge. So many homeless as we hear. And it's great, we're starting to see that we, we need to insulate our homes and the new building energy rating is forcing us all to do that. That's fantastic. Energy won't be lost in our, in our homes if we, we build them right. But could we think about um, housing with a different relationship? Surely for something so important as shelter, the only two ways to procure that either massive debt or rent with pretty dodgy uh, tenure, it's the only way we've got to do housing. Surely there's a better way or a different way of doing that. How do we house ourselves as community, as cooperatives? Well, I went around Europe and looked at about 10 uh, co-housing projects. This is um, a community of people coming together, setting up a small cooperative and borrowing the money to build the, the houses. Usually smaller, but everyone has their own private living space, their own kitchen. But there is, wherever anything idles, like washing machines, we're looking at Clock Jordan and Clock Jordan co-housing, I probably have about 14 units, smaller units, um, our own kitchens. But we don't need 14 washing machines. They can be put into a small laundry. We don't even have to have 14 guest bedrooms. They could be put into a little space that when we've got family or friends coming, we just book. So the idea is that anything that idles in our house could be brought into a community, in a community setting. And these co-housing, I was looking at it as an affordable model. But actually, this is a healthier way to live, not as isolated. In community, there's so much more we could do there. So co-housing, again, all across Europe, it's common. People coming together as cooperatives and, and securing their housing. And you could add then food production, energy production, and all things to that. 
Mobility as well. We need to design our neighborhoods, our streets, our villages, our towns. We need it to be able to be walkable, to be able to be cycling, to be connected with public transport. And it's fantastic to hear that we're going to phase out the internal combustion engine and move to electric cars. But could we go further? Could we be even more disruptive? What if, what if we didn't own the car? So there's, a, there's a, a trend as well, especially in the cities, although in Clock Jordan we've got about three or four self-organizing car clubs where you've got access to a car when you need the car. So if we could come together and these things that spend so many hours on the road doing nothing, idling, that we could use the service of it when we need it, then it's healthier for our pockets. Never mind that it builds a sense of community because there's a bunch of people that we're sharing cars with. The idea of go car, which you see now in the cities, is that you can use it for as little as 15 minutes. You have an app on your phone if you remember. I need a car. Where is one? There's one there. I can use it. The phone unlocks it. You get a bill at the end of the month, like your telephone bill, that says this is how much you've used in the car. This is a, 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 an example of the collaborative economy or the sharing economy, which is rising now. Instead of having to own this stuff, instead of having to own the car or whatever it is, we could share it and have access to it when we need it. And I think for us to move towards sustainability, for us to be more resilient, to have stronger communities, to, we could be doing much more of these initiatives I've just shown there. I mean, I only showed four things there that we're doing in Clark Jordan, but it could be done any street, any neighborhood, at any time. If we're going to adapt to the challenges we face today and surf the waves of change, we will need to nurture greater collaboration and engagement in our local areas, and we'll need more change makers, place makers, and social innovators. I'm going to end with a quote that I love from Jack Kerouac, since it's a change-making uh, TED Talk. Here's to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers, the round pegs and the square holes, the ones who see things differently. You can praise them, you can disagree with them, quote them, disbelieve them, but there's one thing you can't do is ignore them, because they change things. We need to change things. We need to change things quickly. The alarm bell is ringing, but let's remain buoyant and positive and surf those waves of change. Go for it. Thank you. Thank you.